Hey guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives, and today I want to show you some of the tools I use on just about every single build. Now these tools are all fairly inexpensive, uh, but they are extremely useful, especially when you start getting into folder stuff. Now I'll go through each one, uh, some of them that you might not understand uh, why they're on this table here. Uh, I'll give you kind of a brief uh, example or demonstration of each one. So I guess we'll start off with something simple. When you get into folders, get yourself a good quality set of Torx drivers. Now, we've all done it, and I have it too. You go to Home Depot and you, you buy the cheap Chinese set, like that, and they're okay until you get into a problem that screws tight or whatever, uh, and then you realize that they're crap. This set I got off of Amazon. For, I believe it's like 35 or 40 bucks and it's been great I use it for every single knife that has screws on it so definitely spend the money get good a good set like the Weehaws German made I believe and of course I'll leave links to everything in the description down below some of these you've seen before like the one two three blocks uh, I've had a few questions of where you get these for about 20 bucks I've found them on grizzly.com fairly cheap and USA Knife Maker have them. But these are absolutely a necessity, uh, I, I feel anyway, uh, as far as I use them for drilling, for setup work, getting things square. There are a million and one uses for these things and uh, just buy a handful of them, they're great. We'll get that out of here. Now, this you've seen before, this is the Cant Twist Clamps. They're fairly pricey for what you get. I mean, they're about, I want to say 30 or 40 bucks. This is the two inch model. I would say, knife makers, you, you, you guys know how much you use clamps, so get maybe the two inch and the one inch. Right now I have two of these two inch ones and I use them for just about every single build. They're slightly better than the cheaper C clamps and they just they just work. Okay, a punch set. Once you start sticking round steel into round holes, in like folders especially, they tend to get stuck and you'll need to tap them out. So get yourself a little punch set. Trust me, if it hasn't gotten stuck yet, it will, and these are great. So that's a cheap set from Harbor Freight, five bucks or so I think. Now if you're going to tap something out, you don't want to mar anything up. I got these two soft hammers. So you got this one, it's a Harbor Freight, big heavy one. As you can see, I've been beating on stuff with it. And probably stuff I shouldn't have beat on with it. But it doesn't mark anything up. And same with this, little brass side and a hard plasticky side. Uh, if I need to go with something a little lighter. And I use these just about every single build, maybe five bucks each, both Harbor Freight. <clears throat> Again, I'll leave links. If you guys have been following me, you know I use this for every single knife. This is Dykem. A uh, couple bucks and it stains your hands pretty nasty. But they have this type as the felt marker type. Oh yeah, and don't stick your thumb in the grinder by the way. Sorry about the band-aid. See, it's like a marker type. Uh, don't squeeze it to try and get the uh, the die out. I made that mistake and it looks like somebody was murdered in my shop because it exploded everywhere. <laughs> Fun tip for today. Or you could just get the paintbrush type. But I always have that on hand. Alright, now we got a, a scribe. Now I've had, I went to, um, I think it was Sears or something like that and I got this cheapo scribe. And this one's just hardened steel, uh, but it dulled. It dulled pretty quickly, actually. Especially when, and of course, it will not scrape hardened steel. This one will. This is carbide. I got this from McMaster. Uh, a nice fine tip, so if you're tracing around something and trying to outline it or, or whatever, whatever you need it for, and trust me, you will need these, uh, get the carbide tipped one. This was a few bucks from, uh, like I said, McMaster. So I'll show you that, too. I'll give you the link for that. Okay, then we have the calipers. 
Uh, this one I got from Grizzly.com. I guess it's like their cheaper mid-range set. This is, you know, the manual one. Uh, South Bend makes this. I believe it was 40 bucks. But I use this for every single knife. Uh, if you want, you can go and spend the money and get the, those nice Japanese pair of uh, Michitoyos, I think they are. Uh, but get something. You will need it eventually. Uh, I like to use a good set, so I use this for strictly measuring, and I will not scribe anything with it. And then I got a cheap broken one. You know, this is like the $10 special you get at the parts store. And uh, I use this for scribing. Uh, that's really all I use it for. This way I don't mess up the nice one. Alright. In here we got an angle cube. And you might be asking, well, what do you use this for if you don't use jigs and you grind freehand? So you can see it tell you what angle it is depending on the tilt. Uh, this is for when I set up a work rest. Now I do grind freehand, but if I want to contour the handles like a... Let me see, do I have one here? Like this. And I want a consistent contour, I mean these tiny little angles. I can set the work rest to, let's call it 30 degrees, and I can get that angle. I still have to control my pressure and do everything like that, but I get a consistent angle that way. I've done it freehand like this, and it is extremely difficult. That just takes, this just takes some of the guesswork out of it. So, I use this occasionally, but it's a nice to have kind of thing. I don't use it to set bevels or anything like that. That's all by eye. Okay. Uh, this is a punch. Uh, this is one of the spring loaded ones. There's a break little case there. Uh, it's okay. It's a very generic thing, but it's better than smacking it with a hammer. But they're not that accurate. I have a machinist buddy of mine that introduced me to one of these. And this is an optical center punch. So, bring this up on the camera for you. See how it's got a bullseye? Now I have my handle on this piece of G10 here. And when you use stuff like draft sight, so I just line up the bullseye, hold it in place, and then you put the punch into the other side. It makes it that much more accurate. This thing was like 40 bucks uh, from Grizzly, I believe. And I tell you, if I lost it, broke it today, I would buy another one tomorrow, without a doubt. Now, it's funny because the machinist friend of mine told me, he says, this will be the best $40 you ever spent since those condoms in high school. <laughs> He's got a funny sense of humor, that guy. But I'll give you a quick uh, example of how to use that in a minute. Here's an example of the optical center punch. So we have our mark that we want to hit right there. And I'm going to try and do this through the camera without hitting it with the hammer. That would, that would kind of suck. And we line up right on the crosshairs, the bullseye there, hold it nice and tight. So it looks through the camera like I'm lined up, but if it's a little off, it's I'm blaming it on you guys because <laughs> just because you're through the camera. All right, All right I got about <laughs> I got about four inches of room to hit. So here we go. Hopefully that was enough. Let me give it a nice manly swing, but. That looks pretty centered to me. Maybe a thousandth of an inch off. But now our hole is dead set. A cheapy protractor from Home Depot, it was like five bucks. Uh, and I use it sometimes, it's, it's a little fumbly. You know, to set your angles when I'm setting up a work rest. I find the angle cube to be a little easier. But there's times where the angle cube cannot measure uh, this way. You know, so there's times where I have to use this. So this is kind of goes along with it, like five bucks. All right. Oh, actually, before the Bosch set, one of these, the surface gauge. This one, 
Now, if you look on McMaster Car, these things are like $400, which is absolutely ridiculous, but I understand because they're super duper precise. For our method, and if you guys know, and if you're a starting knife maker, you know that scribing that center line is kind of difficult. And if you were like me, you're doing the drill bit method where you get a drill bit of about the same size as the stock and you drag the drill bit along the blade and it's not as accurate. And then the drill bit goes dull and now what? It was annoying, very annoying to use. Uh, I found this one on Grizzly for, I forget what it was, maybe 50, 60 bucks? I don't know, but it wasn't anything near the $400 price tag I've seen him go for. And it is great. So if I want a 20 thousandths uh, variance in between those two lines, I could set it that way, measure it with my calipers, put in my measurement here, divide it by two, and that's exact center every time. And it, like I said, it's carbide tip, so even hardened steel breezes right through it. It's great. So definitely get one of those. I use that for every knife. Now, the oddball, the masonry bit set. Oh, what, do you, what do you need this thing for? And we're not drilling no concrete, come on! <laughs> but this, uh, this one, and I've mentioned it in other videos, I've got this from Tim Troyer of Sugar Creek Forge. He, he kind of taught me this. I use this for countersinking holes. If you look at the bits, you see how they're squared? So they center themselves and then they kind of square off. So when you're doing uh, removable handle scales on knives, or uh, on fixed blades rather, or even getting the hole started for titanium, I have used these on titanium and they do work, they just happen to be a very, very close measurement to the screws I use on removable handle scales. Uh, sorry my hands are workshop, you know, knife stuff, dirty stuff. But I'll roll on an example of uh, using some of this stuff now. Alright, on here I got two examples going. We got our one, two, three blocks set up, and I'm going to go ahead and drill right through them. And they're perfectly level, perfectly flat, so I don't have to worry about any issues of my hole being cocked to one side or another. Now let's see. Oh, looks like our pilot worked. Now this is just some scrap G10, and I'm just going to do it for an example. We'll pretend this is a real handle. Well, let's see. Yep, our hole is gone. Nice and clean through. Okay. Now I'll show you, well I guess I'll show you on this side, what our masonry bit is for. So I have one, and here's our little screw. Sorry about the band-aid again, I know it's filthy. There we go, that's our little screw that we're gonna use for our removable handle to countersink them. You don't want it sitting on the knife like that, that looks kinda of silly. So the way I do it, is I put this in the drill, in the chuck like this, our masonry bit, and I don't have a stop on this, or at least one that I know how to operate properly. So obviously, if we go all the way down, we stop right there. I don't want to do that because I want to put it up here. So what I'll do is I'll zoom you out a little bit first. Is I'll lower the table. So I'll unlock it. I'll bring this all the way down. And here we go, lowering the table. Go maybe a little bit more. So I'm about you zoom in and see that. Sorry about the shakiness. There we go. I'm about halfway down, so I'm going to lower just a touch more. Like that. See what I'm talking about there? About that far down. It might be a little too far, so obviously you want to work up to this. You could always go deeper, but you can't put material back in the hole. So th yeah, this one's going to be pretty deep. So we'll go with that. 
and now now my drill will stop without blowing right through the hole Zoom me out so you can see it now. Okay, there's our hole. See it's countersunk? I'll drop one of the screws in there. And look at that. That's much better than just sitting on the surface. It looks a little rough right now. Obviously you would finish sand it and do all that stuff. And I just kind of rushed through it because for the sake of the video. But they work pretty good. Nice and fitted in there. The granite surf surface plate itself. Now, I think I'm going to make another video just on how important it is to get things flat. And once I show you the, the video of my latest friction folder, you'll understand why. Because this has saved me uh, so many headaches, it's ridiculous. I got this from USA Knife Maker, uh, but... I think they're like 35 bucks, but they're like 35 to ship too. So here's a tip. Go to enco.com and wait until they run one of those. Sign up for the email alerts and sign up. Uh, uh, excuse me, I, I can't speak. I'm getting excited here. So you sign up for the email alerts and then you wait for them to do a free shipping promo. So you get this million pound rock uh, and it's free shipping so you don't get killed on the price. But this, I use it to lap parts smooth all the time. It's every single knife gets lapped on this. Parts and pieces, everything. Right on this plate. And if you follow me on Instagram, most of my pictures are taken on this plate because it's pretty. <laughs> One more thing I wanted to show you was this Harbor Freight T-Handle hex wrench set. Uh, I use these, and now an normal set is like 25 bucks. It's probably still Chinese made. Uh, but these have been working out okay because I use the bigger sizes. You're not really as likely to round them with the amount of torque that I'm putting into what I use it for. And I use this mainly to adjust my work rest. Or, you know, th there's a lot of tools in the shop that have hex nuts on them or hex uh, fasteners that need to be adjusted fairly frequently. And using the L wrenches gets old pretty quickly. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I think the... If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. But these are some cheaper tools that I use all the time, and hopefully they can help you out and make you more productive in your shop. This is Mike from Ecom Knives, and I'll catch you on the next video.